Stephenson. Welcome. Not just some guru. Oh, oh, really? Your host is an economist and a best-selling author. What an interesting news item. I'd better write that down. And just someone who likes to make money and help you to make money. Welcome to Follow the Money Weekly. And here he is, Jerry Robinson. Ah, uh, friends, welcome to this week's edition of Follow the Money Weekly Radio. So glad that you're joining us all around the world. You can find us online at followthemoney.com. Right there, you can find us. You can also find us on social media. Go to YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. You'll find us there as well to search for Follow the Money Daily, and you'll find us online. Okay, friends, we got a great show today lined up for you. We're going to be joined by a very popular author, investor, and commentator on the markets, and that his name is Jim Rogers. He is quite a fellow, uh, Jim Rogers. He actually ran the Quantum Hedge Fund with George Soros way back in the day. Of course, uh, George Soros and Jim Rogers together broke the Bank of England, making over a billion dollars in one day, uh, quite a payday uh, back in the 90s. Uh, since that time, uh, Jim Rogers has traveled the world twice. He retired at the age of 37, and he's going to be here today to talk about Trump, about the Trump administration. He'll be talking about the economy and the Fed. He's also written a very interesting book uh, for his daughters, and it's a father's, basically a father's guidance or a father's admonition, a father's wisdom passed on to his daughters in book form. The name of the book, A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lessons for Life and Investing. So very interesting. And in, in the book, and in fact, I had a chance to read the book just recently, really found it very uh, intriguing. I would encourage you, if you're looking for ways to teach your children about money, you know, there's very few people today uh, who have uh, quite the insight that Jim Rogers has, having traveled the world for fun uh, twice over the last uh, few, uh, a couple of decades, in fact, the first time he went, I believe, he went by a Harley Davidson motorcycle. So he went around the world on a motorcycle. So, I mean, you know, a very interesting story. We're going to talk with him uh, later in the broadcast. Before we bring him on, just a quick heads up on the uh, stock market right now. We have been really seeing the market trying to break out to new highs, but it's been stuck. And it's pretty obviously, you know, why? I mean, why we're facing some gargantuan resistance right now. Investors are just rightfully concerned whether Trump's pro-business agenda is in jeopardy. I mean, we have several different hurdles, I think, to overcome as investors before we get to that place where we can say tax cuts are fully in place and deregulation is fully in force and infrastructure spending you know, is on the move. I mean, all of these hopes that have driven the market higher and driven stock prices higher over the last several months since the election are beginning to look more like hope for investors and traders. And that's why you're seeing the market pull back a little. I mean, you have several key tests coming up. I mean, first of all, you cannot ignore, and I know that many people are trying to downplay or ignore the Russia investigations that are now covering the White House, according to the FBI. But as a trader and an investor, you can't allow your politics to get involved with your investing, right? You've got to keep an eye on this and realize that it is real, no matter what one side of the aisle says or no matter what the other side of the aisle tries to make out of it. The point is, is that these are facts on the ground. And so that's a test. And that could really severely test the Trump administration in its near-term plans to accomplish many of its goals. We have a government shutdown looming at the end of April. And with the House Freedom Caucus in the House of Representatives, we don't know whether that will be a fight. We could see the government on the edge of being shut down. We have a debt ceiling debate coming up, the debate over tax cuts and if there's any spending cuts along with those tax cuts, that's going to be a big deal. And then at the same time, amid all of this, we have other issues. We have issues globally, geopolitically. We have North Korea flaring up. We have Iran uh, flaring up. We have the United States sending troops into Syria, boots on the ground in Syria. We have 
the Pentagon mulling, sending boots on the ground into Yemen. So lots of challenges right now, lots of challenges, and we expect volatility very likely to be picking up as we head into the summer. You know, summer oftentimes is a tough time for the market, kind of the doldrums, as a lot of traders don't trade as actively during the summer. So it's wise for investors and traders to keep a sharp eye on this market right now. Use caution. We recently began buying uh, long-term calls on volatility as we saw the market getting a little top-heavy. All of our members have details on those volatility call options. But if you're not a member, you can become one. Simply go to our website, followthemoney.com, click on the plans and pricing, and you can learn more about how to get our trading ideas, investing ideas, access to our income university, and all of that. All right, without any further ado, we want to bring on our good friend uh, and today's guest, special guest, Jim Rogers, with his insights on life and investing. All right. Well, joining us on the line today is a very well-known investor and author. He is the author of several books. The latest book is called Street Smarts, Adventures on the Road and in the Markets. But it's his book that he wrote just recently called A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lessons for Life and Investing that I really wanted to explore with our guest today. His name is Jim Rogers, joining me from East Asia this morning. Jim, great to have you this morning. I'm delighted to be here, Jerry. Good morning. Thank you so much. Well, many of our folks in the audience are familiar with, no doubt, some of your work. You certainly were a bull during the big commodities bull market starting in about, well, I guess all through parts of the 2000s, but especially in 2008 and the big run-up. We really do like commodities here as, an, as a play against inflation. We use an acronym called PACE, P for precious metals, A for agriculture, C for commodities, E for energy, right? So those are just kind of four great categories that you can fight inflation with. You have a very interesting worldview because you have been around the world twice. I really just want you to introduce yourself, I guess, to our audience and, and kind of help them understand who you are and and how you ended up where you are today well jerry i'm i'm a simple person i grew up in the backwoods of alabama i went to wall street to try to make a living i had some success and at the moment i live in asia because i have two little girls and i want them to know asia and to speak perfect mandarin i'm trying to prepare them for the 21st century pretty simple story. Uh, well, and I think I think the audience might ask, you know, how did a boy from Alabama, you know, end up and I'm looking at your bio here, you go to Yale, you go to Oxford, you end up co founding the quantum fund with George Soros. I mean, how did a boy from Alabama do that? Were you interested in math early on? Were you a prodigy early on? Or did you just is it just hard work and common sense? What is it? Well, it's just a lot of a lot of accidents and a lot of hard work. Yes, <laughs> certainly. You know, like I did go to Yale, I got a scholarship to Yale, I got there and I was, I immediately realized I was in over my head, so I was scared to death and I had to really work very, very hard. Likewise, when I got to Wall Street, I knew immediately I was in over my head and that this was not as easy as it looked. I used to listen to other people and then I realized, well, they don't know what they're talking about either. So I realized I better do a lot of hard work if I was going to try to try to make it. Okay. so. As I was reading through your book, A Gift to My Children, one of the things that really struck me was the fact that you laid out such common sense uh, for your daughters. And by the way, those who are listening to the program today, the book is called A Gift to My Children. And in it, our guest today, Jim Rogers, writes a book for his daughters. He writes a book to help them understand and navigate what appears to be a very uncertain future as we all look out. But Jim has a unique perspective of, as we've already mentioned, he's been around the world twice. Jim, one of my favorite books you ever wrote uh, before this, of course, was Investment Biker. I just love hearing the stories as you went around the world. Just, it's just such an amazing thing. And to retire at the age of 37, did that kind of mess you up a little bit, or retiring that early? Did, did you, you know, I used to have these grandiose plans, foolishly, that I was going to retire when I was 35 and go around the world on my motorcycle. I was very, very keen. 
it was a couple of years later that I actually did retire. But then I said, now I'm going to do it. This was a long time dream of mine since I was a teenager. I look back on it and say, what was wrong with me? How could I be? <laughs> but that's what I wanted to do. And it took me a while to get permission from the Chinese to drive across China. To me, you, you may remember Red China. Mm. You may remember the Soviet Union. Oh, you know, it was, it was an absurd, absurd proposition that an American capitalist could drive across China, could drive across the, the Soviet Union in those days. But I kept knocking on the door, and finally they said yes. And so I got on my bike and off I went. Wow. Going through those countries, seeing them in their underdeveloped state, of course, they've, things have been changing so much, and you point that out in your books. The thing that many people here in the United States are dealing with now, aside from, and I want, I want to talk about global investing in a minute, but the thing that we're dealing with here in the United States, as you well know, is a brand new Trump administration, very early innings of a new presidency. What's your impression so far of the Trump administration. I'm a little bit confused. Maybe it's maybe it's Mr. Trump that's confused too. You know, he promised us dozens of times that he was going to have a trade war with China the first day of office. He was going to impose 45% tariffs. He's going to have a trade war with with Mexico and Japan and Korea. None of that's happened. So I'm not quite sure what has happened to Mr. Trump. Maybe he's just a politician like the rest of them, and he tells one lie after another to get selected. He said some other things that would be very good. He says he's going to cut taxes, which would be fabulous. That's good for everybody in any country. He says he's going to reduce regulations. That's fabulous. He's going to rebuild infrastructure. I mean, he says some wonderful, wonderful things, and he's not doing the trade wars. Jerry, trade wars have always been disastrous for everybody. So I'm, it's good news that he's not doing the trade wars, but who knows what, what may happen down the road. It does seem very unpredictable. It does seem a little bizarre, too. I mean, here in the United States, and, and you're, of course, out of the United States now, so you're not surrounded by the news propaganda that we face on a daily basis here. But much of what we hear is just a lot of fear about the connection between the Trump administration and a potential you know, link to Russia. Do you buy any of that? As you look from afar, as you look at what's happening, do you think that's a diversion? Do you think that this is all just politics that we're seeing? Or do you think there may be something sinister going on? If it's, you're talking about Russia, I doubt that there's anything sinister going on. Uh, I think it's probably either the press or the Democrats or somebody trying to whip up some kind of uh, stir. I don't see whatever the Russians did, if they did anything, they certainly didn't change any votes. I mean, they didn't make a... Hillary Clinton lose, and maybe they planted some articles at worst. But so what? The Democrats were planning articles. The Republicans were planning articles. That's the way the world works. Whenever there's an election in other countries, the CIA is in there planning articles. So this is not, not terribly significant if that's all that's going on. And I don't see that anything else is going on at all. You mentioned in your book about the need for your children to understand BRICS. We were just talking about Russia and then also, of course, uh, China. India, BRICS, B uh, for Brazil, Let's see, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, I guess, on the very end. They have some new acronyms now, the civets and all of these that uh, the same group came up with. But, but the BRICS nations, and specifically with Russia, not too long ago, there was a story that ran, and you had said, buy Russia, forget China. It caught me by surprise. I know that you've been a, a, a really big bull on China. Why Russia? And do you still feel that way, given all the tensions that's going on here in Washington now with Russia? The quote was a little bit garbled. What I had said was, at the moment, you should buy Russia and not, not buy China at the moment, mm. because I, I still own China. I'm still mm. bullish on China. I'm just saying, if you're looking for something to buy, Russia is very, very cheap. Russia at that time was the most hated market in the world. It's still very, very hated as you know, and China was possibly facing trade war with America, which would be disaster for America and for China if it happened. That's all I meant at the time. If you're looking for an opportunity this week, then Russia would be it instead of China. I first went to Russia in 1966. I came away saying this will never work. The next 45 or 50 years, I was bearish on Russia because it just couldn't work. But in the last two or three years, I realized things are changing. 
It's a country with great assets, and the mindset in the Kremlin is changing for whatever reason. So and see, I have learned in my investing career, Jerry, that if you find something that's hated, where there are good assets and it's changing, then chances are you can make a lot of money. That's what happened to me with Russia. My goodness, it's still hated. You're just listening to you talk about what the press is saying, what people are saying about Russia. It's still very hated. Fortunately, the market has started going up. It's, it's gone up a fair amount, but it's still very cheap compared yes. to most in the world. It does seem that way. It, it, it certainly has gone up, you know, in 2017, 2016, we've seen that burst. But uh, you're right. Uh, it does seem still very cheap. Uh, the stocks are probably still some of the cheapest in the world, maybe. And it's a country, yeah. just one other, it's a country with very little debt. So that's historic. It's not as though the Russians were so smart. Nobody would lend money to the Russians. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why they don't have much debt. But here they are, lots of assets, low debt, and things changing. So, I mean, I hope it's going to continue to be a, a good opportunity for me. Interesting. Yeah, we here at Follow the Money, we like to do global investing. I mean, we're always looking for opportunities around the world because it's not just the U.S. stock market that's going up or down, right? There's all these other stock markets that people can participate in today through ETFs. Are you a fan of ETFs? Do you think that's a good way? Do you, do you see the future of ETFs being the, the future of investing for most people? I, I use ETFs as partly because I'm lazy. Obviously, <laughs> it's better if you, if you go and find the real gems, the great hidden values, and buy the stocks, individual stocks. But since I'm lazy, ETFs are a good way to invest. Yeah, a lot of us are lazy. A lot of us prefer that as well. And by the way, I'm on the line today with Jim Rogers, the author of A Gift to My Children. I encourage you to go pick up the book. It is a father's lessons for life and investing, a valuable book filled up with common sense uh, or uncommon wisdom. Uh, some of the things that you mentioned in the book also, uh, as we get to our closing moments here, Jim, one of the things I really enjoyed seeing you write was when you are speaking to your daughter, you're basically saying, don't rely just on books, but go and see the world. And I think that's something today that y you can certainly speak to this as we've already pointed out, but so many people today, they experience world the world through a television screen they experience the world through a ipad or through a smartphone they really don't know what's going on around them most of them are just looking down all their lives this seems to be a problem and even from a more philosophical stance it seems like this is just not a good way for the human race to go forward when you say go and see the world is that something that you is that something that you did with your own daughters you took them around and educated them and how can people of lesser means how can they help their children to see the world the way you, you know, you've talked about? I have learned from my experience, Jerry, that the, if you see the world close to the ground, you're going to find out what's really happening. If you just listen to the TV, you're going to get a very distorted view of what's happening in the world. And, unreal, and it's usually not correct. I drove around the world on a motorcycle. A few years later, I drove around the world in a car. And nearly everywhere I went, I found reality was different from what I had expected. I remember the first time I went to China in 1984, I was terrified because I'd been listening to American propaganda all my life about the evil, vicious Chinese. I got there and I said, wait a minute, these people are hardworking, ambitious, educated. They discipline their children and they save and invest for the future. These guys are on the rise. But if I'd just been listening to American propaganda all my life, I wouldn't have seen anything coming. You know what's happened to China in the last 35 years that has gone from Mao Zedong to perhaps the most successful country in the, the last 30 years. A miracle has been going on. I never would have known that had I not gone there and seen it with my own eyes. But that's true of many places. I told you I went to Russia. I could see that Russia was a basket case, which would never work. But then on another visit to Russia, I saw, hey, wait a minute. Things are changing after all these years. Now, yes, not everybody can do that, can go and, and see the world. Most people aren't going to drive around the world on a motorcycle <laughs> or even in a car. Uh, but if you at least try to get news from different sources, I'm trying to teach my children that whatever they, they should read as many newspapers or Internet shows or TV shows as they, from different countries, because then they can put it together in their own brain. You know, bring it in from this country, bring it in from there, 
take another view. And then you can, you can come up with your own answers and you might get it right. But if you just sit and read the New York Times all day, you're going to have a very distorted view of the world and miss a lot of stuff. You're certainly describing also in your book the protectionism and the isolationism that is rising. We see, and you're a student of history, a student of philosophy, as you see what's happening now, certainly you're seeing some of the red flags of what we've seen in the past, this rising nationalism. Does this concern you? Is it part of why you left the United States? Do you fear for the United States as, as an actual entity going forward, not just from the debt, but just from the anger around the world? I mean, do you think that the United States is just in a really bad place here, or do you see brighter, brighter days ahead? Well, I am an American taxpayer, voter, and citizen, but I do see things to, that worry me a great deal about what's happening. Uh, by the way, I, we don't, the reason we moved to Asia was because I wanted my children to know Asia and to speak Mandarin. Jerry, I, I don't know, you know, I know you're a father. Fathers, parents do strange things for their children. I know people who move to where the football coach is a better coach. I know people who move to the tennis coach or the music teacher. So people do strange things for their children. I'm one of them. We packed up and moved here to prepare these girls for the, for the 21st century. But America, Jerry, in my lifetime, I've seen a lot of what we had as individual liberties. You know, it used to be they couldn't search your house without a search warrant. Now they can break it down. They can break down your bank account. They can break down your garage. They can do just about anything what they want to now. A lot of things have changed. I know that America's making enemies all around the world, which I hate to see, especially since I go around the world. Mm. No, I, there are a lot of, America's the largest debtor nation in the history of the world now. Not just the largest debtor nation in the world, Jerry, the largest in world history. Mm. And the debts are going through the roof. All the politicians say, oh, this is terrible, this debt's terrible. And yet then they go and drive us deeper and deeper into debt. Um, you know, I'm an American citizen, love it, but I do see changes and I have to deal with reality and rather, in fact, rather than what I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in your book, you also talk about how in the future you envision a future that is going to be more fragmented, a future that's going to be more complex, smaller and responsive governments, which would be a good thing. In essence, you're, you're basically envisioning the current nation states and number of countries that we have now basically doubling or tripling over the course of the next several decades or centuries. It's already happening. Yeah. I mean, Czechoslovakia is broken up. Yugoslavia is broken up. Ethiopia is broken up. You know, Sudan is broken up. You already see a lot of countries. Soviet Union mm -hmm. is broken up. You're already seeing lots of countries that are, just didn't work as big uh, artificial entities, historical entities, and it's already starting to change. How many have people trying to break up Italy, break up uh, France, break up Belgium? People trying to break up America. Texas wants to leave. You know, there are people trying to break up Canada. There are people in the west of Canada who want to get out. Yeah, they don't like paying taxes to the east. So, no, it's a, it's a movement which is gathering speed mm -hmm. for better or for worse. Um, it doesn't matter whether I think it's good or bad. It's happening. And one has to deal with facts. All these concepts, by the way, are brought up in Jim Rogers' book, A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lessons for Life and Investing. I encourage you to go check out this book. In our final moment with uh, Jim uh, Rogers, I want to ask you, Jim, a lot of our folks in, the, in our audience today are individuals who are fathers, right, or mothers, and they are also trying to get ahead financially. They see somebody like you, Jim, and they say, wow, what a success story. Look at what he did over the course of his life. And they're struggling perhaps in their own job. They're struggling with their limited money in their 401k. And they're trying to find that common sense or that uncommon wisdom to go to the next level. Can you just in our closing moments just provide some of that uncommon wisdom for our folks? What would you tell someone who was a friend who was trying to get ahead in this current economy, what advice would you part to them? I would, I would strongly urge to keep debt as low as possible because that's going to be a killer coming up. If you're going to invest, don't listen to me. Don't listen to the television. Don't listen to the Internet. Stay with what you know. Everybody knows a lot about something, whether it's cars or fashion or something. Just stay with the area that you already know a lot about. 
Don't listen to your friends. Don't jump in and out. When you find something in your industry that you know a lot about because you read about it all the time or watch it all the time, when you see something that you as know is going to be successful, do some research and you will probably find something before I will, before Jerry will, before Wall Street will, and you'll probably make a good investment. And if, I, if you only had 20 investments in your life, Jerry, you wouldn't jump around. You'd wait until you found really good things, and then you'd be very successful. Everybody wants a hot tip, but Jerry, that's not the way to be successful. The way to be successful is just to stay with what you know, focus on it, find the good opportunities, and after you do that, Jerry, please send me an email, okay? <laughs> so I can look at it too. <laughs> Common sense and uncommon wisdom from my guest today, Jim Rogers, the author of A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lessons for Life and Investing. Thank you so much, Jim, for joining me today. I sure do appreciate your time. Thank you, Jerry. Let's do it again sometime. Look forward to that. Thank you very much. Hey friends, Jerry Robinson here from Follow the Money. Are you ready to learn how to trade the financial markets? Or are you ready to take your current trading to the next level? I want to show you how to trade stocks, commodities, currencies, and options for consistent profits. If you're ready to learn, I'm ready to teach you. In fact, we have created a very powerful trading software and education system that provides you with entry and exit signals on every US-based ETF and stock. Our powerful system allows you to identify the current trend in any U.S.-based ETF or stock with high probability entry and exit ideas. You can use our software on any device, and you'll also get access to ongoing live trading coaching videos. Whether you're a complete newbie to trading or whether you're an experienced trader, you'll love our live video coaching calls held every Tuesday and Friday morning during the live market hours. In addition to ongoing training through our videos, you'll also receive our best trading ideas every evening in our nightly trading report, in which you can log into our website and check out the latest uptrends and downtrends, along with many other high probability trading ideas generated by our system. A lot of people already know how to trade, but they just need a coach. They need someone to help them along. And if that's you, you have found, I believe, the right solution in our trading software and education system. Right now, we're running a very special offer for all new members. Become a pro trader today. Get access to all of our services for only $1. That's right, just $1. Go to followthemoney.com forward slash pro and select our monthly plan and enter March special into the coupon code section and get your very first month for only $1. Simply go to followthemoney.com forward slash pro, choose the monthly option, and be sure to enter the word Word, March special, all one word, no dashes, no spaces, and get your very first 30 days of our complete service for only $1. Try it now. Follow the money.com forward slash pro. Hey friends, this is Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly. Recently, we have been receiving many emails from our listeners commenting on the great help they're getting from our precious metals expert, Tom Cloud. Gold and silver are excellent hedges against the growing threat of coming U.S. inflation. Who's your gold guy? Make it Tom Cloud. With over 30 years' experience with precious metals, Tom will answer all of your questions. Don't buy your gold and silver through some call center and pay inflated prices. Call my good friend Tom Cloud and speak directly with him and get all of your questions answered. For a limited time, Tom is offering free shipping and insurance on every gold and silver purchase made by our listeners. Call 800 247 2812. And when you do, tell him that Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly sent you. And he'll throw in that free shipping and insurance on your entire order. Call your gold guy, Tom Cloud, right now for the very best deals on gold and silver coins. 800-247-2812. That is 800-247-2812.
right, friends, and that brings us to the end of our program. Thank you so much for choosing to allow us into your life each and every week right here on this broadcast. And as always, I leave you with this final word. This time, a reminder from the news. Last week, we learned that American airstrikes upon a crowded section of a neighborhood in the war-torn Iraqi city of Mosul may have killed up to 200 civilians. According to the journalistic project Air Wars, as many as 1,000 civilians have died in U.S.-led coalition airstrikes in Iraq and Syria in the month of March alone. While the White House and the Pentagon have claimed that their rules of engagement have not changed in recent months, the staggering civilian death tolls continue to mount and cause concern both in Iraq and in Syria and, of course, here in the West. Friend, join me in praying for the precious Iraqi people who are caught in the firefight, caught in the war zone, living in hellish conditions, and who are so desperate for peace. And that's just something to think about. Remember, friends, when you want the truth, just follow the money. Have a safe and prosperous week, and we'll see you right back here next time. Until then, God bless. the information contained on the follow the money podcast is strictly for informational and educational purposes it should not be construed as specific investment advice the views and opinions of our guests and sponsors including tom cloud are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of ftmdaily.com or robinson media group llc jerry robinson does hold an insurance license and at times may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products follow-up individualized responses to email or phone requests that involve the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation will not be made absent compliance with state investment advisor registration requirements or an applicable exemption or exclusion and applicable insurance regulations past performance is not indicative of future results you should be aware of the real